Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco, and coming up, two amazing knives on loan. Spyderco gives Endura the K390 treatment, and we're going to take a look at the 10 best Bowies. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. My favorite comment from this past week was from Jay McConnell, frequent contributor to Thursday Night Knives. And uh, it was on my video from Saturday uh, where I was showing how to use the swedge in a back cutting motion on the uh, on the Bowie knife. And he says, uh, awesome demonstration, Bob. I've often played with back cuts on paper using clip points just to see how well the tip is honed. Apparently, it doesn't matter. The back cut is a nasty is nasty any way you slice it. That's a tip I won't forget. Way to cut to the point. So he's got kind of three puns there. And as I become an old man, I'm just loving puns. Uh, someone else said, this is just the kind of advice I was looking for. And that warmed my heart too. So thank you everyone for watching and, uh, and enjoying. And something else that warmed my heart, this is a, a dad joke that came to me from my daughter, who's like the best supplier, uh, almost better than the book they got me. Um, and, uh, Oh, I shouldn't have uh, shouldn't have let you know I was going to lead into a joke. That was one of the bits of advice she gave me. Okay, so uh, let's just pretend you didn't hear that. So why do teen girls always travel in groups of three? <laughs> because they can't even. Ah, oh, you know what? I think we need to get a uh, sound effect that goes either ah oh, or yeah. And I think that that was maybe an awe, but it's in the delivery. Uh, when you see a 12 year old girl go, cause they can't even it's, it's much better. All right. Enough of that. How about a pocket check? So as I've been commenting recently, I'm on a huge Bowie tear uh, that got interrupted by a minor dagger tear. But I'm on a I'm on a big Bowie kind of acquisition thing right now. So today's uh, front right hand pocket had to be a Bowie, and uh, today's Bowie uh, folder was the Cayman XL from Off Grid Knives. Uh, just a big audacious uh, boy. This this is a Bowie knife that lives out loud. Huh? Lives out loud. Uh, that's how that's how we talk in the modern age. I I I really this thing screams gnarly Bowie. Uh, it's got that blade shape that is based sort of on the snout of a caiman, which is a smaller sort of crocodilian animal that lives in South America. I know they they're big in the Pantanal in Brazil. I just happen to know that little factoid. Uh, but they are they have a very kind of long and pointy snout similar to this uh, this here knife. It is a very thin blade stock that is broad and a saber grind about half the way up. So it is incredibly thin and slicey, like all off-grid knives tend to be. Uh, this is an awesome cardboard knife, especially its little, uh, its little brother. Frankly, I haven't used this one on cardboard, but it's got the same blade stock and uh, is broader. So I, su I submit it'll be even better with it. Uh, yeah, so I had this on me today. And I was thinking about, um, as I tend to do, I was thinking about how this uh, blade would work if it, on a thrust. Now, it's so wide, and that swedge sweeps up so high in it, sort of an extreme angle and sweep, that I believe this would make a very large hole in whatever you know, you're going to stab it into. Uh, cardboard, for sure, uh, did a bit of that cardboard stabbing and... That is kind of one of the unique selling propositions of this knife. It's going to make a big hole, but also it's got that tip uh, down below the center line. So not only is it great as a Bowie knife or, or a clip point with all of with all that that implies, but also it's a great nearly worn cliff. I mean, that that tip is so low down. You can use this knife for a lot of great utility cuts. Uh, also, it just has just insanely great action super super drop shot action uh made by best tech i'm a huge fan of best tech and uh, they just do it right as does carry uh with his designs for off-grid 
uh, been carrying the Stinger XL a ton, and I was complimenting on him on it, and he was just saying that demand is through the roof for that knife, which is, I love it. I love hearing that. Warms the cockles of my heart. All right, next up on me today was another knife I've been carrying quite a bit, and this is uh, a unique one, uh, kind of in in a small category with the Yojimbo and a few others. Uh, sub 3.5 inch bladed knives that I will carry happily in my front right pocket. Usually it's got to be three and a half or larger. Just that's just my proclivity or my, I, I guess that's the word. Uh, that's what I want. That's, that's what really, uh, brings, brings me to the yard. Uh, but this one here is 3.25. And I find that, uh, worn cliffs can get in under that 3.5 inch, uh, bar and this is definitely one of them dirk pinkerton designed uh, made by beyond edc this is part of their asymmetric line that's s35 vn and bronze anode titanium great action this also has a great sound let me see if we can hear it nicely on the mic uh so you get a lot of really nice sound in the titanium knife from the uh hollowing out of the you know, the, the weight relief pockets that you get in the titanium that really can make a knife sound great. Well, you look at the, the main bit of the spine and if you put it flat, you'll see an upward angle on that uh, blade that gives it a great utility, um, use of that point. That point has the, the perfect angle for a worn cliff as far as I'm concerned, because it gives you all the pull utility kind of cutting, but it also gives you a nice stabby blade. Uh, it also puts that point, that upward angle here on the blade, puts the point at the center line, which is good for um, knowing where that point is on a thrust or on a penetration sort of thing. You're going into a clamshell package or whatever. Uh, you always know where that tip is because it's center line, no matter how uh, the blade is oriented. Uh, thirdly, today I had the Jack Wolf Knives Benny's Clip. This one just dropped last Friday, the 16th. Uh, I, I haven't kept my eye on it, but I have a feeling this one is so. I mean, each each month, uh, they sell quicker and quicker. People are just very enthusiastic about these awesome knives. But this one, the Benny's Clip, which is Ben Belkin's take on the Lanny's Clip, uh, the classic Tony Bowes design, has just been really receiving a lot of acclaim a, a lot of reviewers are saying this is their favorite so far uh, i'm not necessarily saying this is my favorite jack wolf knives knife so far but i am saying i've used this the most and all along i've kind of said that about each new knife as they've come out but this one <clears throat> is just it's the biggest one of all and it does have a quite a stout spring. And uh, if you needed to use this in a work situation, this would be this would be great. M390 blade steel, integrated titanium liner bolster set up with micarta. I mean, this this is a very tough knife. I don't use it like that. I've used it, uh, but I've used it a lot. And this has been a good food knife for me. I've had a few opportunity, few few steaks recently. I'm not. Uh, I don't eat too many steaks. Trying to watch out for the ticker, uh, but. This recently has been a great going out to dinner knife. I've been going out to dinner a couple of times recently uh, and unexpectedly, and this has been in my pocket. So this has been the thing I've pulled out uh, in lieu of the wet handled dull saw that they hand you at uh, most restaurants. <clears throat> All right. Lastly, uh, today's carry fixed blade was the Revere. The Revere, I want to call it the Revere, the Revere from the 1558 Knife Company. Uh, this is the production knife uh, or semi, you know, semi-production knife line of Master Smith, Master Bladesmith, Josh Fisher. Uh, this one, this one I am bound to make a new Kydex sheath for. I love the one that he made. He just put the grommets too close to the to the blade and it's just too tight. And I hit it with a heat gun last night, try to loosen it up, and it loosened in some places, but not in the not in the right places. So I think I'm gonna make my own my own sheath for this. What I should have done was got the beautiful leather sheath I've could have could have gotten for the same price, but I was like thinking, oh, I won't carry it in the leather sheath. Well, dummy, you can make a kydex sheath. You can't make that sort of leather. Anyway, so this beautiful clip point recurve was what I had on me today. It's nice and thin. This makes for a great in the waistband carry knife, uh, the way I prefer to carry it. 
Uh, it's got a little bit of sheath marking on it, uh, which at first really uh, bothered me, but now I'm liking it. It just looks, you know, like it's getting some use, which it's really actually not. Uh, it's ready for use, uh, but this uh, this blade has not gotten any use yet. Uh, you know, major use. 51, what, 52100 is this blade steel, I believe. And um, just a very nice micarta warm micarta handle i know when i got this and i was showing it off around blade show i got this at blade show people were asking if it was a winkler and i, I suppose it does have a sort of winklerian uh, uh profile a little bit a little bit but i've nerded out on the contours of winkler knives and this is this is pretty different uh, but a great knife nonetheless and uh smaller than my uh, pocket carry actually so that's what I had on me today. I had the 1558 uh, Revere, uh, a recurve clip point. I had the clip point, Lanny's clip. Jeez, everything is clip point, man, uh, except for the next one, which is the contact, the Dirk Pinkerton, uh, lovely Dirk Pinkerton knife. And then, of course, the off-grid Cayman XL. What a cool, cool knife this is. All right, if you, uh, you want to link up with us on patreon and see what we have to offer uh, for exclusive content also knife giveaways and and uh, other ways to help support uh, other ways you get kind of uh, uh you know tipped back for helping support the show go to patreon you can uh, hit the qr code there or just go to the knife junkie.com slash patreon we'd love to see you that's the knife junkie.com slash patreon if you're a knife junkie you're always in the market for a new knife and we've got you covered for the latest weekly knife deals, be sure to visit the knifejunkie.com slash knives. Through our special affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife specials on your favorite knives. Help support the show and save money on a new knife. Shop at the knifejunkie.com slash knives. That's the knifejunkie.com slash knives. You're listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. So as I wait uh, anxiously for Spyderco to drop the Military 2 with its compression lock and tip up carry, I've been keeping my eye on Spyderco and uh, notice that they have, uh, they've given the Endura the K390 treatment. And uh, this, this picture that they have on the, uh, that they've been using for promo is a beautiful uh, Warncliffe version of it. They they use that dark teal uh, handle material, uh, GRN, for the K390 blades. It's K390. It's a semi-stainless, excuse me, semi-stainless uh, carbon steel, tool steel that uh, that is very uh, impact resistant. Sorry, <laughs> I was looking for the word. It's very tough and impact resistant, and that's one of the. Uh, so that's one of the USPs of K390. They have this lineup and they are kind of going through their um, catalog and k 390 things. Uh, I love the look of this Warncliffe. Got to say, I have the Delica Warncliffe and it is awesome, especially with the serrations. Um, and I do know that uh, K390 will, I, I think you can get it to Patino, which is, um, I don't know. I mean, that's something, that's something that I like, but I like this dark teal blue handled uh, affair and i like seeing it come to the endura this is the kind of thing that does not tempt me though i must say i i am not uh i'm a knife snob in the most superficial of ways i'm i'm a knife snob i'm i'm the uh, i'm the guy who who buys the mercedes so that he has the mercedes not not because he loves the performance of the mercedes uh to be 100 percent honest to me the steel is kind of a benchmark of of the quality um and 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 I know, like I'm as I'm saying that, uh, I'm 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 hearing myself, and believe me, yes, I know, uh, it is. Uh, but <laughs> so that does not tempt me when it comes to spending extra money on a Spyderco, for instance. Um, I, I'm not going for the different variations in steel in just about anything. Uh, but I do understand people's desire for that, especially collectors. I understand the collecting instinct. And Spyderco is the most imminently collectible of the modern knives. So, so have at it, you K three ninety people, you you knife, uh, you you blade steel nerds. This this looks like a good one. 
And uh, I like I like watching test videos of uh, these kind of hyper steals like that. So there you go. Endura gets the K390 treatment. Uh, Benchmade is resurrecting a line of knives that I thought was re very cool from the start, but I guess it went away for about two years. Um, and the first two years of it uh, were in the Crooked River, the mini Crooked River uh, line, but it's the artist series. And they have uh, each year they will have a new artist who specializes in woodland and uh, sort of nature art and have them uh, make etchings that go into the bolsters and into the blades that are themed. And the first, let's see, last time, which was two years ago, it was all fish themed. This year it's half fish, half fowl. Um, is that right? Or no, 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 it's not half fish, half fowl. It's half fowl, half here, listen, it's pheasant and mallard, that's fowl, and bull elk and whitetail. So you can get these themes uh, etched into your mini Crooked River with this artist theories, uh, series uh, in the blade, also in the bolster, but also you get a uh, a, a really cool kind of wooden handle. And I, I'm kind of th going to throw wood in quotes because it is wood, but it's that sort of, I don't know, multicolored wood that actually you see on really cheap knives. So it looks kind of funny in this particular picture, but there are others uh, that have less colored wood that that is more attractive to my, to my eye <laughs> for what that is worth. So uh, are you interested in that? A lot of, uh, you know, I dish on Benchmade sometimes for being somewhat boring, uh, at least uh, to me, but really they give you so many options to customize you can you can do this artist line or you can go to their um, online shop and just create the benchmade for you which is a pretty cool thing so i need to lay off benchmade and just be grateful that we have benchmade in our lives all right still to come on the knife junkie podcast we're going to take a look at two knives one is is so ugh, exquisite uh but a couple of knives on loan uh to me and then we're going to take a look at the 10 best Bowie knives. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. All right, Jim, can you cut to the uh, to the knife cam for dramatic purposes, please? That's right. You've never seen a Grimsmo knife on this channel or on this show. And uh, uh, valued patron, Mr. VC256, uh, sent this to me, or actually had had it sent to me on its way to him. Uh, so very, very generous. The generosity of people in this community, um, and 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 I can really speak for the knife junkie community is staggering. I, I'm I'm very uh, I'm very happy. Thank you, Mr. VC, for for letting me check this out. So this thing is beautiful. This is the Grimsmo Norseman. Well, this is the box that it comes in. A uh, very nice stout box. Look at how it presents, though. Oh, yeah. Look at that with the tool and the lube. And it's all kind of fit in these perfectly sculpted out uh, foam uh, inserts. And then there's some directions and birth card and stuff underneath. But this is the Grimsmo Norseman. And uh, let me just say, I, I get the hype. I understand. I, I, I don't even want to call it hype. That 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 word connotes some sort of uh insincerity like i i understand why people are so gaga over this knife it's it's amazing <laughs> i mean okay so it's a polarizing design some people think it's ugly as sin i think it's beautiful i i love the recurve tanto always do but this is a recurve clip point tanto with a swale i mean you're 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 talking my love language in many different ways here the thing that i never cared for visually I, I, I the handle always left me just a little bit cold and then having it in hand makes makes that just go away sometimes just having something in hand makes your feelings about the way it looks go away and here is the real thing the action on this is just sickening it's nauseating <laughs> it makes me it's it's it, it gives me vertigo uh, how, how this just drops it's just you've seen this progressive conversation of this is the smoothest knife i've ever held even smoother than the koenig Arius. that's what i said about the skaha that was smooth 
Yes, this is smoother. This this blade has more weight further out, longer blade. So if all things are equal, the blade makes up for it. But I'm not guessing that all things are equal. All right, let's take a look at this. Um, this is RWL 34 blade steel. It has a dark stone wash finish. You can see this the uh, terraced, uh, what were once terraced steps in milling uh, the grind, the hollow grind on this and, and the rest of the blade. Uh, ground almost all the way out, but you can see it. In other words, you can you can feel it, but it won't affect the cutting at all. Um, but it is a beautiful visual flourish. This is flat ground up here, hollow ground here. And uh, magically sharp, like just insanely sharp. I do not have paper here. Uh, when I do my close-up video, I will do a little paper cutting, just a little bit, uh, just to show you. Because I did cut a piece of paper, and I used just the, that forward edge, and it, it was crazy. I do that when I have a Tonto. I'll check the main edge, of course. But then I'll see how well that front edge uh, cuts, because oftentimes that front edge... Um, that secondary front edge is coming in at a much more oblique flat angle. And so, you know, how well does it slice? We know it's going to pierce. It's going to cut into things when it starts with the tip. Uh, but how does it cut in a vacuum? And this tip cuts amazingly. I, yeah, I'm pretty, pretty amazed by this knife. Uh, I do not have, oh, there you go. Good, good thumb stud action. I was going to say, I I do not, uh, oh man, that thumb stud is beautiful too. Not sure what that material is. I need to pull out the the birth card. Um, I didn't want to molest the box, but I don't think I'll hurt it at all. Beautifully crowned spine, which transitions into a flat spine here. Um, very thin, gold flourishes, gold uh, anodization. Uh, it's stunning. It's a stunning knife. And yeah, it would be a great knife to have. I would love to have this knife. It's very thin and pocketable and feels incredibly sturdy and incredibly drop shut smooth. So, yep, I get it. Grimsmo Norseman. Wow. What an amazing knife. By the way, this is this is not only knurled and then knocked down so that it, it's not it's not hev heavy knurling, but it's also contoured. Now, uh, I reached out to John Grimsmo a while ago. I have to reach back out to him. He, the story of the of Grimsmo knives and and how it basically started as a uh, an experiment on YouTube and grew and grew and grew and grew, and not an experiment on YouTube, but a, an experiment in knife making that he documented in YouTube. So you can basically see how you know he arrived at such a sublime he and his brother arrived at such a sublime creation this thing the grimsmo norseman i i i'm very 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 impressed with it's amazing <clears throat> okay enough about that next up this is another really awesome knife uh that i at blade show i had one in my hands and i was really considering buying it but i was trying to be good or uh, frankly i didn't i didn't come with enough money this year and uh, I wasn't going to, you know, pay interest on a knife and put it on a credit card. I just didn't want to do that. So I passed this one up. Uh, but lo and behold, it was in a box of loaners that good friend Hero Sticks sent. Thanks again, Hero. He's always hooking me up with boxes full of awesome knives, exposing me to new things, different things. And this one, oh, what a joy to see it and to spend a little time with it. This is from Berg Blades, and this is the Iron Pup. Look at this thing. This is the full size iron pup. That's a four inch blade. And uh, it's like a ah, it's a clip point Tonto or a clip point Tonto Bowie hybrid blade. You know, uh, it is a great looking blade. I love that swedge. I love that secondary point. Um, but all of it is the same grind. Unlike the Norseman we were just looking at or other Tontos, uh, it's not two different two different uh, bevels. This is one single bevel. Just has a little sub tip there. Beautiful titanium bolster lock. I am not sure who makes this. I need to do my research. I think it's Riot, um, but I could be mistaken. 
a beautiful, beautiful tight um, micarta. You know, micarta, I, I kind of always like it, even the cheap stuff. But when you get really fine, nice micarta like this is, it, it jumps out at you. Uh, very nice. Uh, no skeletonization in that handle, which on this knife I love. Gives it a substantial <clears throat> but not heavy feel. Um, just look at this in hand. What a beautiful, beautiful knife. Um, this is one that I would consider uh, seeking out. Uh, right now, I'm in a fixed blade phase. I'm, uh, there are a couple of things I want to get the um, I want to get the Colin Maison Pierre knife, the new knife uh, CM Designs from Best Tech, the the tonic. Uh, there are a couple of other folders I want to get. That's way out of my wheelhouse, but it's a, but it's so out of my wheelhouse it's almost in. Um, but this is this you know I've been kind of hard pressed to think what do I want right now that's a flipper titanium you know in this sort of mode and and nothing has been really uh tempting me recently until this showed up and i'm i'm just even looking at its profile against the the light background it's a really beautiful beautiful knife very well built by i'll have to find out who before i make my close up video so another another great one on loan i there's a whole box of them i'll be showing things off uh, as uh, as we go a, a little drip of uh, Hero Sticks loaner knives. And I promise you, uh, Hero, I'll have this box back to you way sooner than the last one. Uh, I will not grow attached to your knives. The Berg Blades Iron Pup, or Iron Wolf, I'm sorry, the Iron Pup is the small version of this knife. Beautiful, beautiful thing. Okay, uh, next up, this was from, this is from a company uh, it's called BPS Knives. They're out of Ukraine. They reached out to me and asked if I wanted to check out one of their knives. Well, so I went to their website and checked them out, and I said, yeah, send something over. Uh, so they sent me this Bushcraft knife. I believe, yeah, the HK5CSH is the is the model number. Before we get to the knife, I just want to stress how incredibly sumptuous and stout and sturdy this uh, sheath is. It's a beautiful drop sheath actually i wore this this past weekend you can see it on my belt when i do my uh, goofy swedge knife uh bowie fighting video i have this on my belt uh great dangler sheath i ordinarily don't care for danglers that's an awesome sheath uh but here's the knife it's a um uh 1085 blade this is uh a scandy ground blade with a wicked convex edge it's been stropped or or polished into a convex edge this thing is just insanely sharp um and uh a, a great ergonomic knife this is made by a father-son team in ukraine and they're looking to penetrate the uh the american market i i've seen um choir boys uh has one of these on their channel uh scab does and uh Oh, I, I love to see him abuse this, but I'm going to use this in a fire pit. My my most abusive thing. We're going to do a fire pit. I'll uh, baton some wood with it. I'll do some fire, uh, some sticking, feather sticking with it. Have the girls shoot it. See how it works. Uh, but I used it this past weekend just in noodling around, throwing it into a, into a tree stump and that kind of thing. It's awesome. I I wish the best for these guys. Uh, I'm going to do a close up on this with some test footage. BPS knives, out of Ukraine. Um, the handle is, oh, what is it? Walnut? It's not walnut. It's something else. But oddly, um, I mean, it's sanded and, but it's unfinished, which is kind of cool. I'm going to finish this. I'm going to put a, a sort of dark red stain on this once I test it and show it off as it came. <clears throat> Now, I have a lanyard on, the, on there. That's not the one I'm going to leave on. I'm, I'm going to put a different one on. I put this on initially just to pull it out, in and out of the sheath because it was very tight at first, but now it's perfect. This is a great knife. I'm very psyched about this. BPS knives. Uh, also, uh, not, to, not for nothing, but a great way to support Ukraine in a very direct way if, you, if that is in your, you know, if you're interested in doing that. Um, BPS knives, uh, Ukraine. Okay. Last up, uh, since I've been on this Bowie thing, I, I ordered the cold steel Marauder and I just want to show it real quickly before I put it back in its box and send it, send it back to Amazon. First of all, this is how it arrived from Amazon. They just threw it in an envelope. Like, here you go, buddy. Take your knife. Here's your knife, nerd. 
thanks for the knife, nerd. Get yourself one. Okay, so that this is how it showed up. Scuff on the clip. Obviously, someone had this before me, and I hate that, that they don't tell you. Uh, you can see the mark there on the, you know, this has been clipped shut for a long time. And uh, the blade, there's nothing wrong with the blade except the blade. Uh, it's beautiful, and I've always wanted one of these, sort of, um, because I've had this OSS forever and love it and thought it would be in the same same sort of line. This has a very, very heavy blade, and with this very light craton handle, uh, it just feels weird. It's balanced like a chopper, but it's clearly a fighting knife with the sub hilt and that style of clip point. So it's it kind of doesn't know what it wants to be. I think they used to be hollow ground, in which case they'd be a much lighter knife and seems to make much more sense uh, for a fighting thing. This comes to a very wedge like. Uh, wedge like edge, I'm not sure if you can see that, but I mean, it's it's just not the Bowie for me, so I'm sending it back. Uh, does anyone out there have an old hollow ground Marauder? Is it lighter? Is it uh, is it different? Is it weighted? more like a balanced, more like this at the hilt, you know, where a fighter should be balanced. I don't know. I know this has a lot less weight to it because there's a lot less blade steel to it, but uh, yeah, cold steel, cold steel, hollow that blade, buddy. All right. So let's move on to the 10 best Bowies. I've been, I've been dancing around this topic all morning, all day, and uh, I just want to get to it. But before we do, I want to show you that I'm going to be doing that a lot. My bowies are all arrayed out next to me on my bench. So uh, not enough room on this table for all these big bowies. Uh, so this one right here uh, is not on the official list, but this is the one that started it all. This was a kit that I got as a child, uh, probably like 12 or something like that. You know, you sew the leather, you just with that, but you get the blade, you get, you get everything and you put it together. And you might, some of you might recognize this. I've seen these. I actually, I saw one of these for sale on uh, eBay and someone made same sheath and everything, um, you know, that they made in the seventies or eighties, like I did. And they were charging like 400 bucks. Like, like it was taken directly from the Alamo made me, made me laugh, but I love this thing. I've always had, I've had this for a long time and it really did start my love for Bowie knives. Love this thing. Uh, and I had this, packed away for years and then recently found it had it on my wall and now it's uh it's kicking it with the rest of the bowies all right first up this this is the one that by far has gotten the most real use this is or use at all <laughs> this is the uh trail master bowie from cold steel we all know the trail master this was their one of their first um one of the first knives they made that veered away from the Tonto. Tonto was their first fixed blade. I believe this was their second. Um, this is an old uh, 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 VG1, I believe, VG1 blade. Uh, I've had this for a good 25 years or so. Um, the very first time I used it, it was when I was uh, uh, caught in the woods in the dark uh, around Lake George and uh, had to in New York and, and had to make my way out. I had this in my backpack, put it on my hip, and I swear we were being stalked by. Uh, but this is this is how I remember things, though. You know, everything gets everything gets more dramatic with time. But I felt like we were being stalked by a mountain lion or something, something while we were leaving. Uh, so I was glad to have this on my hip. Not that, uh, not that. Well, who knows? This would a well placed shot with this would do in a mountain lion. However, uh, I was I was not the the knife man I am now. So. Anyway, this this is the uh, the great work knife. Also used it a lot, and you know, for about a year and a half, I had sap on it that I just couldn't get off from the white pine our neighbors have that sheds limbs on our yard. And I finally got it off, and all it was was WD forty. And I had people tell me that in the past, and uh, still didn't work. Uh, oh, by the way, before I move this out of the way, a sharpened zero ground swedge here for breaking bones, bam. And I'm not just talking about in a fight, I'm talking about hunting, you know, that kind of thing. But a, a great swedge back there, I love that. A zero ground swedge I think is my favorite, even more than a fully sharpened swedge. Since these knives are so large, I'm not gonna leave them out. I'm gonna resheathe them and put them down. 
Next up, this is a barn burner. I love this thing. Brand new to me is the company Kudaman. 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 I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm sorry. Uh, from Spain. And uh, first of all, beautiful red stitched uh, full hide, you know, tough leather sheath with their elephant logo uh, engraved in there. But look at this beautiful knife. I've been showing this off a lot recently because I just got it. This one um, was suggested heavily by uh, Legion Tactical, a channel that I like, a guy who really digs uh, big fixed blade knives. And he got this and man, I was sold. His videos, first of all, sold me on him. He was very enthusiastic, but just looking at it, I was like, man, that is a beautiful style Bowie. And I don't have this style in my collection with the uh, hollow grind and uh, that shape blade, that, that particular type of blade, and then with the sort of neutral handle. And then I realized, well, the Von Temsky is kind of like that. <laughs> but it doesn't have that blade handle combo. So I had to get this thing. Uh, another another uh, factor that drew me to this was that Legion Tactical, I'm sorry, I, I, I forget his name, um, but he tested the hell out of his and really, really bashed on it. And, and, and after all of it, it sliced paper like it was nothing. And this has a steel called, it's a molybdenum, 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 molybdenum vanadium steel made in Spain. I, I, I always have trouble with that word, molybdenum, even if I'm looking at it and reading it, and vanadium. That's all they call it. Now, I looked at a bunch of other, uh, I looked at muelas and jokers, uh, other really good Spanish uh, knives, and they use uh, a, a similar molybdenum vanadium steel i can hear you all yelling the prop proper pronunciation at your at your computers or radios all right so that's that's the kuda man bowie next up is something a little bit more modern so let me take a moment to uh lay down some caveats here uh it, it took all i had not to put the k-bar in this list not to put the not to put the randall um number 16 that I have in this list, and other fighting clip point blades. Really, what I'm trying to focus here on Bowie's, when you hear about Bowie's, uh, the, the general definition is about a nine inch blade, about a quarter inch thick. Some of these are right in that area. Some of these veer, veer from it in one way or another, but I am not going down to the combat classic level, the, uh, the, the, the K-bar style, the K-bar thickness, the K-bar style. Uh, size, I mean. Uh, so that is my caveat for this list. I have a whole other bunch of knives that are clip points and that are awesome fixed blades, but they don't quite make it into the Bowie category for me. This next one is probably the most diminutive of, of all of them. It's the Prather War Bowie. See here, see here, I just was flexed into Bowie. I'm, I'm a northern guy. I'm from the north, so I, I Bowie just sounds weird to me. Uh, so this Bowie is the Prather War Buoy. Uh, and it's a beautiful knife designed by Jeff Prather. You've got some really interesting aspects to this knife. Uh, first of all, it is a quarter inch thick, so it makes the list in that regard. It is uh, an eight inch blade, so it's not quite as long, but as a traditional or technical Bowie, uh, but it has this incredible long swedge, really great for piercing comes to a sort of diamond tip because of that swedge. So great penetration and then just this, this great long sweeping swedge, which is going to create a giant, and I hate this expression, but wound channel if you're going to use this as a thrusting you know, weapon. Um, but great cutter. It's incredibly sharp 1095 blade steel. Great edge. That they really sharpen their edges beautifully uh, at tops and they show they post a lot of videos of them doing so on Instagram. It's always fun uh, to watch. Um, but great edge on this. I've seen a lot of people use this as an outdoors knife. So this this is a knife that flexes uh, in and out um, of of different uses. Uh, but as a Bowie, it's something here around the handle area reminds me of a French knife, a French fighting knife. A lot of those French fighting knives were based on French kitchen knives. And you have a choil here. You have a, a finger guard 
but the finger guard is the ricasso. The finger guard is the blade itself. You have a very wide blade and a handle that narrows uh, as you get towards the blade, and that leaves you with a blade guard. Here's, here's a French version of it. It's the Spyderco Street Bowie by French uh, knife maker, designer, and general ex-commando badass uh, uh, Fred Parent. That's how he designs his knives. He has the blade guard is just the blade. So uh, Prather War Bowie, uh, this didn't make the list, even though it's called a Bowie because it's too small in all dimensions. But I love the Street Bowie and mine is razor sharp and I'm carrying it right now because I had to take the other one off to show it to you. OK, so just while we have it right here, um, if you're looking, if you're watching you can see that incredible profile of this knife. What a beautiful knife this is. Prather War Bowie in a sheath that of my own making. Um, sometimes my Kydex sheaths are perfect, case in point right here, and sometimes they're garbage, and I have plenty of those. But this was just one of the ones that turned out perfectly, um, and that is the Topps Prather War Bowie. So this next one is a... Uh, a Bowie knife that takes its its lineage from its 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 design cues from a, an historical knife that the Marines used called the Mariner uh, the Marine Raider Bowie uh, the V44. So this is the Bark River Knives V44 Bowie. Uh, this was a release. I think it was a 20, 2018 or twenty nineteen release. And my dad got it for me. He heard me talking about it on this show when, when it was announced. Oh, I love this thing. And how amazing. And with the Moran handle, they had stacked leather. They had wood. They had a bunch of different handles. But I love this shaped uh, green linen or uh, a canvas micarta in the Moran, Bill Moran style handle. So he got it for me. My, my dad's awesome. I have an incredible family. I'm, I'm very lucky. Uh, not just because they buy me knives. Uh, great sheath with a frog so you can take this out and slip it in your belt like a real frontiersman or you can hang it from your belt but here's the knife uh it's a2 tool steel and very broad and just wickedly sharp and like all bark river knives it has a convex or apple seed grind um if you're to look at it in cross section instead of coming together like this like a like a regular edge, it comes together like this, sort of rounded. And so it gives it a little bit more beef behind the edge, but it also uh, makes it incredible for carving and fine tasks. Feels great in hand. It is a thinner, uh, a little bit thinner than than uh, than a quarter inch. This is three, six, three sixteenths of an inch. Is that right? Uh, very, very nice blade. It's got that perfect shape. I love that shape. It reminds me of one uh, we're going to see here. The last one we're going to see here uh, reminds me a bit of that classic Bowie knife. You've got the S guard in brass, very heavy brass. The, the lower quillion is a little bit longer, um, and you can come up. Oh, you cannot on this one. I was going to say you can come up onto the blade. Some of these, you can come over the quillion, uh, but this one, now you're going to keep it back there or like this, if you're going to be in a saber grip. Uh, just a great, great fighting Bowie. Fighting Bowie that will flex into outdoorsmanship. Um, some fighting Bowies are long and thin. We have one here I'll show. And some are more choppy like this. But you get from that thinner blade, you get a more uh, easy to move in hand, what do they call it? More, more lively in hand blade. You got a big, long, broad blade, but since it's thinner, it moves easier. Yeah, beautiful knife. Bowie from Bark River Knives. Next up, the Sog Super Bowie. Now, I don't have any other Mac V Sogs in the collection. Bark River makes one, Vehement Knives makes one, a bunch of people make them, um, but SOG made their name on it, and uh, though they have done some cheesy stuff in the past, this makes up for all of those missteps right here, this beautiful, beautiful knife. The SOG Super Bowie, this is a quarter-inch distal tapered uh, Bowie knife. 
at uh, what is that? That's a seven and a half inch blade. So this is kind of in that combat classic uh, size, but it is a Mac V SOG. And uh, that is, uh, you can identify it from these two peaks on the spine and that swale and that long swedge there. Um, the, the SOG version has a slightly sharpened tip. Great for a back cut. Great for fighting like this. For that initial uh, defanging the snake strike to the arm or hand is, you know, you really get a lot of effect from that from that point down that this shape here, that point uh, down, you get some nasty gouging that this edge, even though it's wicked sharp, you'll you'll get some nasty cutting. But uh, you have more of a chance to glance off of things if you got to get through and really make a point. It's a great way to start. I mean, what I hear from people who have experience, it's a great way to start with the knife backwards like this. I have a whole video on it. It's kind of goofy. Uh, you can check it out. But the Mac, uh, the SOG version of the Mac V SOG has that slightly sharpened tip and uh, is just ideal for that very move. Stacked leather handle. Oh, so beautiful. This is OS 8 steel. I'm not sure if it's annealed. Made in Taiwan and just... Gorgeous, gorgeous knife. One of my very, very favorite knives and shapes ever is the Mac V Sog. Uh, they made they made a version of this knife called the Trident uh, for more aquatic you know, for the Navy, I guess. And it was black micarta, I believe, black micarta with with uh, uh, polished aluminum embellishments. Uh, really, really beautiful version of this. Uh, oh, and uh, a steel blade, you know, not not darkened like that. Very stout leather sheath with uh, an Arcus Arkansas stone in there as well. Okay, next up. Uh, oh, I did a little bit of. Uh, let's see. So the... All right, this next one is the Condor. It's a Condor, and it's technically not a Bowie, but is a knife that represents the spirit of the Bowie almost better than any of these, in, in a sense. This is the Condor Hudson Bay. And the Hudson Bay style knife is a big clip point cleavery style affair like this. So it, it, it has some of the, uh, well, it's got sort of the upswept edge and higher uh, point of like a butcher knife got the clip point of a bowie knife and the thickness and and heft of a bowie knife it's got this sort of area like the more like the kitchen knives in the in the french knife i was talking about where the the blade itself is the guard and it's an all-arounder it's not a fighter it's not a camp knife it's not a trapper's knife it's it's all of those things it's it is a survive in the wilderness and do work knife and get off of me knife and oh there's a bear coming after me knife and uh one shot out of my musket missed and now i have to fight by hand knife you know this is a uh cut your dinner knife this is an everything knife and that's kind of uh that was a bit of the spirit of the of the first bowie knives yes the the first bowie knife was created as a weapon it was created as a weapon but they were adopted quickly and used for everything on the frontier and that's what I love about this, uh, about this Hudson Bay, sort of uh, northern version of the Bowie knife. And um, Bark River Knives makes a beautiful version of it. Lots of people make the Hudson, Hudson Bay knife. Uh, what do you think? Am I, am, I, uh, am I stepping over the bounds in adding this to the Bowie, Bowie, uh, Bowie list? I think I'm not because of the spirit of the thing. But let me know. The northern Bowie. That's what we'll call it, the Hudson Bay knife. This one by Condor is awesome. They make a, a, a smaller version of it. I don't know why you would need that, but if you do, they make a smaller version of it. And just so you know, I have put this knife, this is one knife that has gotten a hell of a lot of use. We had a whole giant hedgerow, giant is maybe, it. we had a hedgerow of about 10 individual hedges all grown together. And we pulled those out years ago now, um, but I, I cut them all down with this knife and it, I hit rocks. I hit all, it was chipped and all sorts of stuff, but I think, uh, 1075, this is not 10, this is 1075 sharpened it all out. 
And uh, this knife has periodically been uh, all the way sharpened on my um, belt sander. And it takes a great edge. This has been chipped up and gnarled many times. And uh, it just keeps coming back. This is a great knife. Uh, I highly recommend. I, I need more condors in my, in my life. You know what would work great in this list? The Condor Undertaker Bowie. Yeah, that is for sure. Next up, another cold steel. Hardly a moment without a cold steel around here. The classic Laredo Bowie. And so grateful I got this way back when, when it was in the killer leather sheath with the amazing so that's the best stud ever i like carrying bowie knives like this where you slip it in the belt and then it stays in there because there, there's a stud you can do that because it's long and it's heavy um i tried to do that with a smaller with my uh writer by uh attention to detail mercantile i had my brother make me a sheath of this concept but the blade to handle ratio is such that having a stud just didn't make any sense it doesn't work but on this one, it does, and now it's all in Kydex wah, wah, or Securex. Uh, it's it's kind of a shame to have a beautiful knife with faux coca bolo and brass fittings and then ha put it in a big plastic sheath. So I'm glad I got this one in this. Um, lots of history in this knife. Uh, this one, to me, is over 15 years old. I, I know I got it when I lived in New York City. I can't just can't remember uh, what the year was. But it was a long time ago, and when I got it, I was a less assertive individual. It came to me with a cracked handle, and uh, the sheath scuffed the blade. Something nasty. You can see, you can see the ghosts of that. But I was like, uh, I didn't want to send it back. I was like, this is my knife, you know, whether it's whether it's cracked or not. This is the one they sent, and so it's my. You know, I, I don't know if that was just me not wanting to send it back and wait or if it was me not wanting to assert myself and say, hey, you sent me some crap here. Not that it's crap, but uh, a defective item. But it sort of added to the sort of do anything with this knife attitude that I adopted uh, for many years. This has been my in closet Bowie knife, you know, so, you know, everywhere has a knife just in case I'm dressing and uh, ninja come into the room, I'll, I'll be able to reach up and grab this Bowie knife. Um, so it's always been around. Uh, I've used it a lot outside, banged around on it quite a bit. It has a cable tang, um, but that hasn't affected this. It's been strong, strong as all get out. But what is the cable tang? The, the blade tang comes to about here, and then it's soldered onto a cable, and then that cable is soldered onto a nut, and then it's, you know, the nut is is screwed on in the back it works fine but i'm i'm thinking why that seems like such a pain in the ass and it seems like a long process and why would you add other points of of possible weakness but so i don't get it but it works great on this knife in particular uh your mileage may vary uh, but so the laredo bowie i was talking about fighting bowies this is not uh, a batoning I, i've used it as such just to see uh, and you shouldn't. This is five sixteenths of an inch, by the way. Uh, but this is a fighting Bowie. It is long. It is slender. It moves well in the hand. It's got a fully uh, zero ground edge, so it's not it's not slicing bread, but it is messing stuff up. Uh, if you were to use this knife in this grip, with the blade uh, with the edge pointed towards you, and you're using that tip, and this uh, this bone breaking wedge here against someone's forearm in a in a in a duel i mean we're talking a duel of course <clears throat> uh yeah this is a fighting blade and then the fact that it is long and slender meaning it can go in and out of things uh without much hang up that's a big that's a big factor too beautiful coffin shaped handle i am a huge huge fan of the L L laredo bowie and now i'm really regretting the fact that i never got the natchez bowie the natchez bowie with the with the leather sheath. It can now be had with the Securex plastic sheath in 3V for like 500 bucks. And I'm just, you know, I'm not buying a cold steel for 500 bucks. All right. Next up is, oh, this one's a beauty. This is the Shining Mountain Bowie. 
And this one is uh, Bark River Knives, Shining Mountain Bowie. Uh, and the reason I stipulate that is that the Shining Mountain here, first I'll show it to you in this gorgeous sheath. Uh, same thing as with the V44, the frog comes off and you can use that little stud. I wish the stud was bigger on these. I wish the stud were larger. Um, so I'm going to pull this out. This is dark because I had it uh, treated, water treated. When you buy these, uh, they'll they'll uh, they'll either come raw, that beautiful tan leather, or you can have them treated for you know water resistance, and they come dark like this. So, okay. So the reason I called this uh, the Bark River Shining Mountain Boy is that it is the Shining Mount. <clears throat> The Shining Mountain Bowie is a design by uh, Mike Stewart, now of Bark River Knives. That's that's the he's the man who started Bark River Knives. He's also the man who started Blackjack Knives, uh, which later got bought. Um, but they do still produce some of the high end Blackjack Knives um, and and other knives. Uh, he's he's been in the knife world for ages, and so this this particular pattern of Bowie is his, and it's traveled with him. There has been a Blackjack version of this <coughs> excuse me and i've seen other versions uh, also just a big big nasty blade and nasty uh yes in a fight for sure uh but but also just uh you're gonna you're gonna just clear through the forest with this thing uh you can do heavy woodwork with this it's got a very stout um convex grind right now it's i need to clean it up a little bit it's I tried, um, well, I put some oil on there and it just got all gummed up and weird. So I got to polish that out. But um, you get a lot of weight and you have a very dull swedge here. Dull, not, I shouldn't even call it dull, very flat swedge. So you can pound this, you can baton this through wood all day long and um, your baton will stay whole, which doesn't matter much because as Donnie B says, uh, they are free. Um, but any case, uh, this is not set up for for a fight necessarily, but no doubt, if turned around and used in this way, would be devastating. Uh, not only you know, if you miss the tip and miss the gouge, you just break the bone. Yeah, hit them with this, break the bone. Okay, uh, antiqued stack leather handle and uh, this butt cap. This comes also. Uh, it came in a number of different versions, different handle shapes, uh, the Moran style that you saw before, um, and I think one other style. But this, to me, was clearly the right choice. All right, as we pull into the station, we got two more. This is the this is the biggest daddy of them all. This uh, a gift from my brother. This is from uh, our northern European friends uh, at Svord. Sword. This is interesting. I didn't notice this until I put it right under the under the um, camera here. But this incredibly amazing stout leather welt full grain sheath here uh, has their logo, the Sword logo on the front, and it kind of looks like the seek symbol, doesn't it? With those two uh, curved sort of sabers there. It's kind of cool. All right, this is one that my brother gave me uh, for Christmas or my birthday one year. Yes, my brother's awesome. As I mentioned, uh, I love my family for many reasons, but one of them is that they give me things like this <laughs> for celebrations. The Von Temsky Bowie, and uh, this is a, a knife that a an explorer called Von Temsky uh, made in New Zealand. So he was. Uh, colonizing new zealand or exploring new zealand for for the colonizers uh i guess uh colonizing force i'm guessing from great britain but i i forgot to read up on this <laughs> sorry i did it one time you can look at that video uh he gave everyone in his kind of group of roughnecks uh a bowie just like this because he had one made for himself and found it amazing for everything camp hunt fight so he had them you know they were doing a lot of all of those things so he had these made for his whole crew it is a giant blade um this is an 11 uh, 11 inch blade 11 and a half what is this may as well bust out no it's 11 it's an 11 inch blade uh high carbon steel it's got that really nice uh heat treat scale still on it or uh, that heat treat pattern on it um and then you just see out of that this 
nice big convex edge ground into it. It this is crazy sharp, but has that sort of um, apple seed edge. Wicked, wicked knife. Lots of weight, uh, five sixteenths of an inch. A beautiful wooden handle, and uh, just an intimidating big knife. You got that S guard, and you've got um, you've got guards on the side too. So if you're in a duel and someone's blade hits your blade and it slides down uh, that guard might stop it from chopping your knuckles uh, this comes to a nearly zero ground swedge but it's so obtuse and angle that it doesn't really matter this is just this is a you know bone breaker you come down on the back of the hand with that and uh, the guy's gonna drop his knife and then maybe you don't have to kill him you know all right so that is the Svord von Temsky Bowie. They also make a small version of this, but why? All right. Last up is one, another one my brother gave me. He got this one at a pawn shop. And I said, Vic, if you ever go back to that pawn shop and they have another one exactly like that, please get it for me because I have to own it. And it is the classic Western W49 Bowie uh, based on the Marine Raider that I was talking about earlier, the V44 has that same sort of uh, uh, widening towards the belly and towards the tip blade. This thing is awesome. A fighting Bowie. Look at the thinness of the blade and, uh, and, and the sweep of the front. You've got a downward, downward portion here. That's going to just aid in slashing and cutting. And then an upward portion that's going to do a number as the blade is leaving. A great point uh, and a pretty thin swedge. Uh, this would also do this fight well like this. That S guard is extreme in this case. Uh, the Western style Bowies. Um, Cold Steel makes their version of it. Baron Sun makes their version of it. Uh, every uh, Many different case knives makes their version of the Western Bowie. Um, they all have this S S guard on mine it is extreme you can see this downward quillion the person who owned this before pounded it down and it is very difficult to pound back up i tried um and after putting a couple of dents i was like eh, i don't need it i i i have a story about this knife i don't know what the real story is but it's uh it's labeled d and that means it was uh, made in 1980 this knife has been around for a while it's got a bone handle it's got a pounded down quillion so to me this was like some rogue. I don't know. Maybe he was like a, a motorcycle gang dude or maybe I don't know. But this I feel like this belonged to a rogue of some sort. Someone who, if they didn't use this knife, had this knife to use. And we all know this is a fighting knife. So uh, something about this with the bone handle. I don't know what kind of bone that is. Uh, the pounded down quillion. This is a menacing Bowie. And uh one of my absolute favorites in my collection. So thank you, Vic. You're awesome. Uh, you're responsible for a number of these knives and, uh, and dad too. All right. The Bowie knife, a great American tradition and uh, a growing family tradition in the DeMarco household. Thank you for coming with me on this journey down the clip point road. Uh, I do love Bowie knives and I have a couple a uh, couple that I really, really want to get my hands on the frontier Bowie. For instance, I'm thinking, once I get rid of the Marauder, I get the Frontier um, and, uh, and make up for it. Uh, please join us on Wednesday for the Midweek Supplemental and Thursday for Thursday Night Knives at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. And then, of course, you can download the audio-only podcast to your favorite podcast app. All right, for Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, I implore you to not take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at the knifejunkie.com or call our 24 7 listener line at 724 466 4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the knife junkie podcast